Gary, I want you to tell the people what you just asked me before we started doing this program. This feels like a trap. Um, I just asked Elle that if women, much like men, experience ugly days. Welcome to the L. Duncan Show with well, Gary Strasky. You look Strasky. wonderful. Well, you look awesome, by the way. That's actual cat, too. That's not what you said. What? What you said, Gary, was, do you ever just, like, 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 sometimes you feel, like, really good about yourself, and you're like, yeah, like, I look really good. And then some days you just can't get it together and don't feel good. Isn't that more of what you said? I mean, in a roundabout way, I'm just saying, like, we go through phases where you're like, dang, I look good. And then, like, one day you wake up and no matter what happened, you're just like, damn, I'm ugly. And I just feel, I just, Vacillate. I'm just wondering if women experience the same thing. I'm laughing at this because I'm actually going through one of these moments right now. Like, I'm not going to lie. After the tournament, the women's tournament, people were being really nice. I was, like, getting all some of these fits I've been holding off. Straight for a up. While. You work a lot, so you don't really get to eat. Uh -huh. So, you know, by function of that, you lose weight. Like, I was just feeling really great, right? Shorty was Pictures snapping. Are lit. Right. I'm posting thirst traps on Instagram, which <laughs> I'm not something I normally do. Birthdays. And it's as if... God above was like, let's humble this girl. And I have been rocking a goiter on my cheek. It's actually gone down quite a bit. What is a goiter? It's like a giant pimple. It, oh. Like it's the biggest, it just keeps growing and forming to the point where a couple of days ago, I honestly entertained the fact of like just putting a little Sharpie right there on it and leaning in and making it a beauty mark. I ain't gonna lie to you. You got the Cindy Crawford thing going on right now. That could be it except for that it's a hideous pimple that sometimes leaks. And so- <laughs> Hey, there it is. <laughs> to, your, to answer your question, yes. Okay. I'm going through one of those days right now. We couldn't like, tell. Oof, it's just been a tough few days for your girl. We Gee. love that we're still getting adult acne, but that's totally fine. Means you're going through puberty still. That's, does you know that know what, what that saying? means? That's what I like to think it means when I get pimples. I'm like, maybe sure. I'll grow a couple inches height-wise. How's that worked out for you? Six one and counting. He's <laughs> <laughs> been there for like years. <laughs> straight up. Um, we of course are coming off of the first round of the NFL draft, which is why this version of the L Duncan Show, which normally, as all of you already know, comes out on Thursdays, is coming uh -huh. out on Friday because we wanted to have draft reaction. And before we get hey. to all the draft stuff. <laughs> And what? you had some reactions last yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> a double dip with the Broncos in Atlanta. We're gonna get into it. We're we're gonna get into it. But I, I love being reminded every year we know a few things are going to happen. We're going to be watching quarterbacks. We're going to see, you know, who makes the stupid, you no know, mushroom pick like the Falcons did yesterday. We always sort of expect these things. But the one thing that the draft does for me every year, and I almost get amnesia and forget until we're in the moment is my favorite thing about the draft is playing the game of who the f are all these people <laughs> Straight up. when we see these NFL draft parties? Yeah. <laughs> How do you have 65 uh -huh, friends uh -huh. that all wore the same matching t-shirt Correct. of you from Pee Wee football? It's, it's actually a lot, Gary. Do you know off the top of your head 50 people that you could invite to your home for a monumentous occasion? Or do you think some of these people were invitees of invitees, right? I think they opened it up to everybody. I right. think it was one of those. A lot of strangers in the crib. 100%. It's a lot of strangers you in the crib. You know what? Hey, yo, my cousin's about to get drafted. Do you want to go? He said I could bring anybody. <laughs> Just as long as you wear this stupid t-shirt. But if he's a first round pick, no strangers, because they're going to trip down the stairs. <laughs> that guaranteed money. <laughs> the other thing that I love, I don't love, I actually... It, Loves a strong word. Okay. I enjoy the cringe. I love secondhand hand embarrassment. I, can't I really stand do. It, I Elle. love it. I can't I stand it. I love secondhand embarrassment. Oh, somebody else loves it. First too. time doing television, Gary has his phone on. Correct. That's okay. Correct. You, on just your second day, you'll learn to put it just on. Just in you. case there's any trades ahead of round two. You, Adam okay. Shepherd. I'm trying to help us out. Uh huh. Um, I also love sort of playing the whoever that is getting put in their place game. Now, oh. we've seen this from time to time. <laughs> When a football player Shoot. has his probably girlfriend, I mean, I think the most famous one is Russell Wilson with his wife at the time, whose mouth opened in a way that was so unnatural when he got drafted. And I think oh. the meme is always like, throwback to when Russell Wilson's wife thought she was set for life. You know, she's like, Rah! she's so <laughs> excited. And we've seen it a few times, yes. you know, where these girls get sort of put in their place if they will. And we saw it again last night. Okay. 
And we saw it from Olu Fashionu. Yes. Penn and State offensive, Penn State lineman. offensive lineman. New York Jets drafted him 11th overall because he is Here tapped with protecting Aaron Rodgers. We're showing it. Mom gives him a hug, right? Actually, okay. should. He, it looks like he's sandwiched by mom and dad. Oh, oh here we go. Shows here. Girlfriend reaches across mom to touch his leg. I'm here too, honey. Uh -huh. Look, girlfriend then actually is going to slide in. Like sure. she's like uh, unaware if she's in the camera shot or not. Yes. She's like, it's me. I'm here too. She I'm did scooch. She, she did scooch over a little bit. Yep. She scooches like, girl, we ha we're yep. in a wide shot right now. We're seeing all 75 of you, including the random dude in the back with the cowboy hat. That's either here nor there. This was incredibly awkward. Now this young lady mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is sort of being memed as like the, why are you here? Mom boxed her out. Yep. What would you have done in this situation? How would you coach her up? Well, uh, good. First of all, we know where he gets it from, right? He obviously gets it from his mother. His mother does a great job of separating what the defender from the <laughs> offender. And that's exactly what Olu is going to have to do with Aaron Rodgers and this AFC East defense. Props to the girlfriend. I I'm assuming that I'm assuming the relationship here props to the girlfriend who closed that space, who closed that gap quickly because she knew she's trying to get to target. But what did mother teach girlfriend right there? If you're reaching, yeah, I'm teaching. Yeah. So what she did, she felt the pressure coming from her blind side. And what she did is she created space by swinging the arm as if it was a pendulum. Didn't make contact. That's a personal foul. Uh, but she created that space through the width of her arm. And that's where Olu obviously gets it from. But then he'll turn a little bit later in the clip. The mother, after, of course, embracing her son, her dearly beloved, who is now a New York Jet, turns to the girlfriend, hugs her, and we're like, oh, all is well. But was the hug to, again, keep her from Olu so that the dad can now get Probably. some one-on-one -on -one time. She ran a, a pick and roll. A pick and roll. Wow. She's combining multi-sport. I'm saying. Multi-sport athlete. We know that interior linemen and women, mother in this case, are they're, they're smart, right? They're the smart ones sure. on the field. And just, just the situational awareness, the tactician, the tacticity in which she exemplified. Listen, I haven't texted Field Yates and I haven't texted Adam Schefter yet, but it wouldn't be surprised. Or they haven't returned your her, call. That's probably more likely. Sure. Uh, Mama Fashanu. She might be an early third round pick. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have sources. Yeah. I barely got friends, but that's just kind of how I saw it. Yeah. Um, it was, it, I, I feel like if I was to coach her up, if we okay. could sort of go back in time, we would watch the tape. Okay. I would have told her like, it looks more desperate that you keep reaching across trying to touch his leg. Like, like, like you, you like you have to be a part of this moment so much. I understand even why you want to have your girlfriend on the couch, I personally don't think it's necessary. She could have been right there in the second row. Okay. She could have been a shoulder rub mm -hmm. or a lean. You know, you can go. Here it, right. And here it is. Right yeah. Let's take top. a look. Let's take a look at the film. Let's take yeah. a look at the film. Now, those are clearly some some dignitaries in his family. Of that course, the first row. But she could have leaned over and given him a kiss that way yep. if she really wanted. This is just here we go. Here we go. She just keeps Lock reaching out. and Lock rubbing, out. like creates the space with the shoulder. She really does. Let me ask you this question. Fast forward, and I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use the X Man as an example. Okay, twenty years. He's a draft pick. He's sitting right next to you and Omar on the couch. He's got a girlfriend. Pretty young thing at the time. Boom. He gets drafted. We see this exact same thing play out. What's Mama Duncan doing? Well, first of all... You creating that I, space? I birthed him. I watched him take his first steps in life, including and on a football field. Yeah. And so, yes, I get first right yep. of refusal. Correct. I get first dibs on hugs. I can get as many as I want, snuggles okay. if I want. Okay. And then whatever he chooses to do, he knew his girlfriend was sitting there. True. If it was that important to him, he could have leaned forward and grabbed her. Little, little, little side shimmy. A side shimmy. Side shimmy. He could have leaned yep. forward. He could have got up and went okay. and hugged her. Okay. We saw, you know, Bo Nix kiki in with his wife. You know, his whole entire head was in her lap. Correct. That, mine was too, but it's because I was crying when they drafted <laughs> Bo Nix. Which is a perfect segue. Okay, can we can we get into the Bo Nix pick at 12 overall? Well, first of all, okay. let's do the thing that set up what was, for me, you know, the most nonsensical thing that could have happened in the first <laughs> right? Because we knew that they were probably going to try and target Bo Nix. I personally felt like the Broncos could have traded down and still got Bo Nix. Okay. We'll get into that. But here come the Atlanta Falcons, come on. who just spent a hundred million guaranteed mm -hmm. to bring in an oft hurt vet okay. in Kirk Cousins. Okay, two year deal, hundred M's to get this guy because, for all intents and purposes, he is your guy. Okay. You feel like you are a quarterback away from really, really competing in the NFC yep. South. Cool. All right, that's fine. And then. You go with your first round pick, despite the fact that a huge part of why you weren't good last year was your poorest defense. Mm -hmm. You could have been the first team to get your pick of 
yeah. defensive players. Sure. Nobody else had at that point. And instead, you go with the heir apparent, mm -hmm. a soon-to-be 24-year-old who has as many, if not more, injuries than the sure. guy he's going to be backing up with your first round pick, your first round top 10 pick, when most people believed you could have got him in the low 20s, potentially in the second round. It makes zero sense. Four consecutive seasons that Michael Penix did finish his collegiate season injured. All four years when he was at Indiana, the last two years at Washington, he has stayed relatively healthy. Michael Penix Jr., 24 years young, right now older than three members of that Atlanta Falcons offense in uh, Pitts, in Drake London, and in uh, B. But the John cameraman Robinson. wasn't even ready because he didn't think it was coming. <laughs> he had to adjust the camera. He was like, oh, we didn't know we was going to have to go to him so quick. But what if, can I play devil's advocate for just a second, please? You can try. Because when... <laughs> It does some, you don't even like this team. I, exactly. This, You're not even a Falcon. That's the other thing is every time I react to something stupid that the Falcons do, then people are like, well, it's your team. I'm like, no, it's not. Okay, my team's worse. They just drafted me. I hate you for real. Okay, let me just devil's advocate just a little bit because, and I've been a proponent of saying when you draft a quarterback in the first round, they are expected to play right away. And how many times have we seen that actually be successful? Not very many times. Okay, not very many. CJ Stroud last year. Okay, that's an anomaly. How many times have we seen it become successful where a first round quarterback actually does get to sort of get, get to marinate, get to learn, get to sit behind a veteran starter for a season, two seasons. If you're in Rodgers, three seasons. Patrick Mahomes had to sit behind Alex Smith. You obviously have the Aaron Rodgers comp. If uh, Jordan Love right now behind Aaron Rodgers, he had to sit for three years and he showed signs of promise last year. So while on the surface, like, gosh, that's your eighth pick. Last year, Atlanta chose Bijan Robinson, who will be joining the program very shortly uh, with their eight overall pick. To use that, that is a hefty, hefty price tag to use on somebody who, if Kirk Cousins stays healthy, won't see the field for three seasons. And he'll be 30 years old by then. He's going to be 27. He's already an he'll old be, quarterback. He's going to be 28. He's going to be 28 freaking years old. And, <sighs> and like to hear Terry Fox say that, the GM for the Falcons, like he basically said that he was like, in a perfect world, Michael Penix is sitting for four or five years because we're in such a... I'm like, that's not a perfect world. He'll be 32 years old. And, and and you spent an eighth... Like, Here's the thing. If you are... If you literally only are a quarterback away and you can pad... I get this. I actually... This, to me, is like the Russell Wilson red flag alert. Here, and here he is explaining here is to Terry Arthur Fontenot Blank. trying to explain to Arthur Blank why he just made that incredibly stupid move. It's inexplicable, frankly, but I think that they are scared about the Russell Wilson decision in Denver, right? It's almost the same sort of, you bring a guy in, you gave him all this money, right. he hasn't played a single snap for you. Russell Wilson wasn't hurt, and Kirk Cousins is, but he hasn't played a snap for you, and they want to pad. They want insurance, okay? And I understand that, but you could have traded down out of that pick yeah. and still got Michael Penix Jr. Correct. You could have. Yeah, everybody, that all of our draft analysts and all of the mocks, uh, did not have him going majority in the first round. Most of them had him going second round. But then that's when that quarterback run happens, right? Because it, all it takes, all it takes is one person not abiding by the thousands of mocks that we put out every single year for all of the other front offices to start to panic and say, holy smokes, our guy is not there. And then it begins the run of everybody panicking. We see that in real life drafting, as we saw last night. We see it every year in fantasy football where somebody is quick to take a tight end and then all of a sudden six tight ends are off the board. Saw that a little bit, um, you know, with the quarterback position. But yikes, I would have loved to see, and I don't know what the projections actually were, defense, yes, but like a Roma Dunze going to be opposite a Drake London with Kirk Cousins. Throw everything at this Atlanta offense and actually show us something and show us why you, you paid your quarterback a hundred million more skill positions. You need See, I love defense. Skill positions. I mean, they've got plenty of skill positions. Yeah. They've used skill. They've used their picks for skill positions the last like three uh, years. Correct. They're good on skill positions. They need a defense. It's yeah. important that year that they made it to the Super Bowl. I know 28 to three. I get it. It's because their defense out overperformed. Yeah. Not just because Matt Ryan was having an MVP season. It's because the defense really played outside of themselves very quickly because we have to get to a commercial break. I will address the Bo Nick situation. I, I love it. To, I don't need to address it. Here's all I need to say. I'll say it straight from Mel Kuyper Jr.'s assessment of this. Okay. Most people believe 
that we already know Bo Nix's ceiling because he's played over 60 games. The question is, can he do full field reads? We are asking a top 12 pick, can he do full field reads? That's who you think is the face of your, and I get it, like, I certainly didn't feel like Zach Wilson coming in was going, mm-hmm. that's it. They're going to they're gonna be able to rest now. They're going to be able to look elsewhere. They found their guy. But this idea that now we're hearing like Sean Payton is favoring him in the same way he wanted to go get Mahomes. Y'all, please stop. Okay, this man you, is not Patrick Mahomes. Let, let's not on day one already start putting him in the same sentence. Y'all well, stop. Well, they're in the same division. But, I mean, I'm not saying that. But you have to give Sean Payton the benefit of the doubt here. Why? He saw the writing on the wall with Russell Wilson, as did everybody else, and he was the guy who, alongside Drew Brees, sub everything. He was below grade in every statistical measurable. They still won a Super Bowl in 2009. So if Sean Payton sees something out of Bo Nix that, let's say, Mel Kuyper Jr. doesn't see, I think he at least deserves the benefit of the doubt. And that's fine. Here's something he also could have seen. He could have foreseen that second round grade that Bo Nix had, probably traded down out of that 12 pick and still got Bo Nix and another first round pick. Like, stop. They've now that they've got no second round pick. Like this team has a lot of holes that they need to fill. Yeah, they, and they the suck. idea that they didn't even entertain trading out of that pick where they still could have got they could have got Bo Nix later on in the first round. And then potentially you add a second round so that you're not doing something besides holding your you know what on the second day. I just can't. It's fine. It's great. It's f- fine. It's all good. Sure about that? <laughs> no, I think Elle's beauty mark is getting bigger. I'm she's stressing. Inside. That's the stress. Uh, on the <laughs> other side, not stressed at all, because we are going to be joined by the guy that really helped kick off this whole phenomenon that is the L. Duncan Show. Phenomenon in our head. Bijan Robinson joins the program. All right, we are joined now by the source of the first viral video that we ever had on the L. Duncan show. We went into the lab. We were so inspired by his work on the Atlanta Falcons that we created an entire song that, listen, is it a hit record? Not yet. Just in the just in the making. Not yet. Yep. But if you don't remember, ladies and gentlemen, a quick reminder, the Bijan Bounce. Y'all created a song? We only got one name to call. Let's go. Bees on left, bees on right, bees on up the middle, bees on down the side, bees on on the screen, bees on in the back, hell, bees on in the wild, can't, can't, can't forget, forget that. that. Bees on left, bees on right, bees on up the middle, bees on down the side, bees on on the screen, bees on in the back, hell, bees on in the wild, can't, can't forget that. I'm just going to tell you right now, Bijan, it is my five and three year old's favorite song that was ever created just uh-huh. solely about you. What does it feel like to have a not yet hit in the making just <laughs> about your football prowess? Yeah, I mean, that, that's first of all, that's awesome. I got to see the see the song. Uh, um, there's a video to it. Uh, but there is no, a vi- be careful what you wish for, Bijan. There is a video. <laughs> you know, I'd see that one. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a blessing. Come on, now you got a song that I haven't seen yet. It's awesome. Uh, but no, yeah, it's it's cool. Even just like, you know, being being a just a figure like that, that kids love, that that people love to watch. Um and to be like a guy that I can, you know, just just be an entertainment to so many people. Um it is always is always awesome. And, you know, I just love doing it for for the right reasons and to bring positivity to just everybody who watches me play. And so that's that's definitely pretty cool that, you know, y'all did that. Um but yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch that video. Well, Bijan, you know, L, she's like the queen of Atlanta, so she keeps her I, finger on the pulse of everything that goes on down there. So I think she got uh, some radio play with that thing here and there. Oh, whoa! <laughs> See, we got you. We got you. So of course, one of the things um, that you're notorious for, outside of your excellent uh, skills on a football field, are having a name that we still aren't totally clear if it's Bijan or Bijan, but um, we. <clears throat> Like going with Bijan because, of course, there's Dijon who was also part of the lyrics of that hit song right. in the making. Is can you clear that up for us before we get into this whole thing? Is it Bijan yeah. or is it Bijan? Yeah. So, so how my how my mom, you know, pronounces it is is Bijan, uh, but like how I say, it, I just say I just say Bijan just because it's it's easy and people have been telling me like Bijan all my life. So it's really how you want to say it, but I, I say Bijan. Um, but if you think Bajan sounds great, 
out the tongue, then you got it. Uh, <laughs> Respect respectfully, I I can't go against moms here. I know. So I, I know. can't. I can't disrespect mom on the podcast here, Bajan. So saying. I guess that's what it's gonna be. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. She put a little fr she put a little French on it. I like yeah, that. That's right. it, it, it's French. Yeah, I know, I know. And well, for the interest of this, we're gonna go French, but we're gonna go with like the whole like Bijan Dijon, because of yep. course you've got that mustard. Right. And we figured that considering you are sort of the unofficial official representative of all condiments. Coming off of the NFL draft, we figured we would do a quick condiment draft with you. And considering mm -hmm. you are already a a first round pick for the for the Falcons, yeah. number eight overall, we'll get into that in a minute. Bijan, okay. we would like to give you the first selection in the condiment oh. draft. Who are you selecting with your first overall pick? Oh, well, you got you got to know the first overall pick is is that Bijan Musterson. You know, <laughs> best one. It's the best one. I'm uh, saying you could have scooped that up in the fifth, sixth round. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the one that's just like, like a puka, you know. That, that okay. Is, you know, <laughs> but um, the next one, I, I don't know, probably like Heinz, Heinz ketchup. Oh wait, hey, don't steal that second overall pick from L. L, you got that second overall pick, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, well, I was gonna go next, and I was gonna take hot sauce because I put that on everything. So oh. yeah, hot sauce. Gary, who are you taking? That's pretty broad, so I think we're gonna visit the hot sauce uh, conversation again. I know I'm going to get clowned for this, but give me ranch. It's so multifaceted, mm, yeah. multi-purpose. You know yeah, I mean? it's giving ranch. You seem, yeah. I was actually going to put you at a relish guy. So I, I, you surprised I, me with ranch. I knew you were going to say that. Who's your yeah. second overall pick, Bijan? Second one. So, okay. So I'm a, I'm a partner with Louis, with Louisiana hot sauce. So you, I guess you didn't say what kind. So I, I guess I'm going to say Louisiana hot sauce. Okay. Yeah. Next. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Are you anything yeah. like me, Bijan? Do you have certain hot sauces that you pull out at certain moments, right? There is an egg hot sauce. There is a hot sauce specifically for stews. There's a hot sauce for barbecue, right? Like there's a hot sauce for yeah. collards. <laughs> I would say, uh, <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> you just keep that thing on him. I do that. I do that one hot sauce, uh, <laughs> but an egg hot sauce. What, what do you what do you put what do you put on the eggs? Oh yeah, a little hot sauce. I like a little Cholula on my eggs specifically. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Louisiana is um specifically for like collards, any kind of green thing, like leafy something that you've been sort Make of good boiling. Hearts, good hearts. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I also don't have a Louisiana hot sauce endorsement, so I would also put that on everything. <laughs> well played, sir. You know what to do. That's right. That's Dude. right. All right, Gary, who you got? Well, listen, if we're on the theme of hot sauce and as the um, as the Asian representation here, I got to go. I got to go Sri Racha. I'm surprised it was still there. All right. Hey. But give me that Sri Racha, which is good sun up to sun down. All sure. right. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. So right now I have ranch and I got Sri Racha. You can combine the two and make something special, too. Good. All right. You're yeah. Your last pick, Bijan, and the condiment draft is. Last pick. Um. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say mayo. Whoa, a little surprising on the mayo but pick. Only only on certain things. Yeah, like, like I, I eat a lot of sandwiches and I got I got to get the mayo on there. Okay, like, mayo and mustard every time. Yeah, I mean that's you can I'm set your like, you can set your clock to that one. Definitely not that yeah, guy. mayo by itself. Like that's not me. Yeah. That's <laughs> I feel like mayo is like the like the kickers. They're like they're like place kickers <laughs> of the NFL draft where it's like you know, you need them. Certainly they're important. Yeah. But you don't want to spend a high draft pick on them for sure. No. You know, but mayo like Yeah, mayo's like plastic or uh like the practice squad guys, you know what I'm saying? Like that you, you need them. They're sort of a binding agent, right? right. But but they take a lot of flack. You know, and you're either pro practice squad or you're like, why do these people occupy a space on my team? L, who's your final pick? My yeah. final pick's honey mustard. I'm sorry. I honey think people mustard. really give it a bad. I don't know why you're rolling your eyes, Bijan. There is mustard and honey mustard. Okay. I, I love it. Right. <laughs> I like a little pick. Dijon mustard with my honey. I think it's it's fantastic. I don't know why people hate on it. No, I like that. I'm I'm shocked that ketchup is going to stay on the board as well as barbecue sauce. But with my third and final condiment, and I, I'm going to bend the rules a little bit here, honey. Honey, you can put on everything. And it's good for you. On everything. I love honey. 
A little shiracha, honey. You can mix and match. Give me some of that. Or that KFC biscuit. I'm saying, hey, you need listen. You need some moisture on the biscuit, otherwise, you fight, <laughs> otherwise, you fight for your life, bro. You do. That's right. <laughs> um, Bijan, we're talking to you today, courtesy of our good friends Mercedes Benz. What are you? What are you and the Falcons doing with them? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're here on the voluntary day. You know, building 175 little libraries. Um, so I, th I think it's cool because, you know, I feel I feel kids nowadays. You know, they or just kind of anybody like either they'll go they'll go to just, you know, online for a book or they'll be on TikTok or, or just doing, you know, stuff socially, which is which is great. Um, but I think, you know, having a, an attraction to to bring kids, you know, with the, with those hardcover books um, and just all the elementary schools. And I know life's transitioning to technology, but I think it's still good for for, you know, us kids or, or teenagers or adults, you know, to always, you know, have the hardcover book that we can always, you know, just gain knowledge from. So, you know, I think that's, that's really important. Um, not just for, for, for young kids, but, you know, I think, I think it's good to start them at a young age. So they know, um, you know, that this is what, this is what I need to, to learn and to, to have my best, to be my best self mentally in the future. Um, but that's, that's definitely what we're doing here. Um, I think it's a great, great cause for, you know, so many people. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's been really fun to to go out there and, and build the libraries uh, for, for everybody. I always That's wonder awesome. who builds those libraries, right? Like I see them all over the place and they are, there's such, a, there's nothing like a kid, like smelling the pages of a book. I don't know. It's like not nearly as sexy to just stuff them with Amazon Kindles. Like they need to see the pages of books and to see that they're worn. And there's usually an inscription. And I don't know, I get all the good feelings when I pass one of those little libraries. So well done, sir. And not just that, but I, and hopefully, Bijan, you, you might be old enough, maybe too young to remember this, but me and Elle certainly do. The Scholastic Book Fair, every time that thing rolled through the that schools, was lit. Yeah. I'm dropping, I dropped $20 on everything but a book posters, yeah. pencils, yes. uh, Hot Wheels. That was, was those everything. were the days. <laughs> yeah, those, those are the good days right there. The elementary, <laughs> those are the days. Take me back. Good. So, Bijan, we've already had two rounds of the NFL uh, draft um, by the time that this is airing. Just wondering, like, what – it's been a year. Like, it's been a year since you got drafted. That's crazy, right? Like, what do you remember most about about that night or uh, following, you know, your name announced number eight to the Falcons? Yeah, I mean, I remember just, like, the week leading up to it. Um, and there was just, like, so much controversy. You know, can he go here? Can he go there? Can he go to, to this pick? this high or, or this low, like, and I just remember like all the talk, you know, I would walk past the TV and then you'd see my headliner up. Is he, is he available here? Like, it was just crazy. So <laughs> on that night, like, you know, it, it was, it was definitely just a lot of just, you know, confidence and, you know, whoever's going to take me, but just unsurety of understanding, you know, I can go really anywhere, but, you know, obviously I knew that guy had the plan to, to put me with the Falcons and, you know, that that night with all the family there and everybody there just, you know, supporting me and, you know, everybody waiting to see where, where I end up um, was, was definitely like the best feeling ever. Uh, and even just like all, all the other guys that were there too, like building a relationship with them and just seeing, you know, meeting their families, meeting who, who's helped them out along the ways. But I think that's a great experience for, for these, for these dudes coming up um, to the NFL and, you know, I think they just can't take it for granted at all and just, you know, have as much fun as they can with it because it's a one it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and you want to make the most. So, but yeah, man, I, I'm excited for, for what happens tomorrow, though. So I'll tell you that. Oh, he didn't have to wait long. Eighth overall, no, you know what no. I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, he barely got a seat warm yeah. before, he, he, before he had to pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a quick question too on the the news making that we saw uh Reggie Bush getting his Heisman back. I imagine he's a guy that you grew up watching. I see it. Like what it, what do, what are your thoughts on on that news that he's going to get it back? It was it's amazing news. Like you know it's about time obviously. You know I, I feel like I don't care what happened. I mean, I feel like he was the best college running back ever and what he did on the field was was so was so entertaining for everybody to see. Obviously I was like three um when he was playing but you know I've, I've seen highlights my grandpa he was he's a Pac-12 official and you know he's done so many of his games um so like he, he's always been my favorite player but it, it, was, it was about time that they gave it back to him I mean you know I was like what, what are you what are you holding it from yeah um, 
you know, he, he's done everything that he had to do on the field to to deserve that. So I'm I'm excited for him. I'm a, I'll probably send him a text or something after this and just be like, yo, congrats, bro. And yeah, I'm happy for the dude. The formality of it all was like inconsequential, right? You're in the locker rooms with with players like you, Bijan, and obviously just because officially his Heisman was taken away doesn't take away from anything that he was actually able to do and produce and how much respect he holds like within locker rooms and people who watched him growing up, right? Exactly. Like, he's, he's that guy. Yeah, for sure. Well, really quickly before we let you go, we just got to ask you about, you know, the Falcons. You guys have another guy that, you know, you probably grew up watching. I don't. How old were you in middle school when Kirk Cousins did his famous? You like that? I was, you play, how old I was, were you? Um, you know, when Kirk Cousins was in college, I wasn't even in elementary school yet. <laughs> you know that? Like, yeah, I told him that. I was like, bro, you, you know, when you started college, like, I was in daycare. <laughs> I was having fun in daycare. I'm sure you love that. The legs are fresh. You know, you know, so yeah, I think I was in middle school or I was in when that happened, when that video happened. Crazy. Oh my gosh. And now he's your quarterback. Right now he's my, my cue. And we, we've been having so much fun too. Like that's, he's already my dude. And we, we got there looking sharp, but he's just a, like a good dude to just be around. So it's fun. It's fun out there. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we can't wait to see what the Falcons can do. Certainly, you guys are really just a quarterback away. Uh, but if they took our advice, which was just put Bijan on the Wildcat. You don't even need one. I'm just saying the man can do it all. Bijan Robinson, we're going to get you a copy of that tape so that Please. you can uh, you can be inspired by it. You, I, There's many feelings I think you're going to feel about it. Inspired is not one of them. However, it's a, bop. <laughs> it's a little bit of a bop. I'm just going to say it's a little bit of a bop. Um, we appreciate you so much joining us on the show. Good luck this season. We'll be watching. We'll be we'll be doing more. Maybe a remix is coming. Who knows? Oh, remix. Can you oh, rap? The remix will be there. Okay. Let's do it. Bichon, confirmed we'll be, on the feature. We'll be a part of it, though. We'll be a part of it, though. Yes. Yeah. Confirmed yeah. feature. Yeah, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, he got bars. <laughs> Thanks, Bijan. Yep, yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Later. We back on the L. Duncan Show back. with Gary Streisky. All right, the NBA is going in. Appreciate Bijan Robinson, by the way. He's real cool. Yo, we are going to Atlanta to yeah, shoot we'll the find music you. video, for real. Yeah, like, I, just I know we're flowery in. branches. Straight up, and I, I don't, but I have GPS. Just get us in the stadium. Yeah. We'll take care of the rest. 100%. Might get arrested afterwards. Sick. <laughs> um, the uh, Sixers needed a win Straight up. on Thursday night against the Knicks, and Joel Embiid said, put him on my back. I Correct. got you. This dude dropped a 50-piece and then afterwards revealed that he's suffering from Bell's palsy. Which is, I didn't even know what that was. Yeah. I need the, the, the definition of it. Yeah. I, I actually know someone who uh, was dealing with that. It's really tough. It's like face paralysis. Painful. Very well, paralysis, painful. Yeah. Face paralysis. Sure. You get some drooping, migraines. Like, it's not great. He's been having to wear glasses and he's still. Yeah. I mean, this dude is like hurt and has Bell's palsy and is still just absolutely punishing the Knicks. Uh, a historic shooting effort for the Sixers. And a little bit of this of is of his own doing. He did all but guarantee a win Correct. in this game and in this series. And he certainly is doing everything he can to get him back in this one. I mean, we have the six. I'm, I'm watching the highlights here and he went for 50. He needs some help. Oh, yeah. Right there. The right eye. It. Yeah. You can yeah. The it. right eye took a little bit longer to, yeah. I guess, to guess to, to blink. Yeah. Um, that would make somebody that's outside of Philly proper actually cheer for a Philadelphia professional sporting team. I don't think many people outside of LA uh, L are cheering for the Lakers, especially what LeBron said after game three. It's just basketball. Of course, it's just basketball when your team's when down 0-3 and you're on the brink of another series. We ain't ducking no to smoke, the Gary. Denver Nuggets. So L, here's the thing. Do you like revenge? I love revenge. Revenge is awesome. How long have you, what's your longest grudge that you've held? I don't actually hold grudges. You don't? I don't you believe just in them. Live peacefully. I, yeah, I move on, compartmentalize and move on. But I like watching other people have remember. revenge. Okay, listen, I've held a grudge for like over two years. We're going to get into it for another episode. But Nikola Jokic, remember two All Star games ago, yeah. he was the last man on the, the stage because that was when they were drafting players who waited to the very last pick to select Nikola Jokic, but one LeBron James. Yeah. What have the Lakers not done since then? Beat them. Beat the Nuggets. 11 mm. straight You think that's what he's doing? Losses. And is every time he hits a bucket, he's Hell in his head? Hell yeah. Like, this is for all-star game. <laughs>
<laughs> That's exactly what he's saying. That is exactly what I he's never forget compartmentalizing the Nuggets. L R A wagon and. You're just too good, dude. Super good. You're too good. And like, like uh, the Lakers can keep like hitting us with all these moral victories that they want. Like oh. we're playing well for 47 and a half minutes. I'm like, yeah, but in that other half minute, you're getting blitzed, dude. Which They're just crazy. too good. They're too deep. They've taken a lead. The Lakers have into every game. And I, I only know this because I did sports center this morning. They've taken a lead in every game at halftime this series. And they've been up every single game in this series by at least 12 points yeah. at some point in the game. Yeah, and they're you know, The Lakers are straight up just blowing it. Yes, they're blowing leads because they're getting tired. Yes. You know, the, the Nuggets are not. They just have a deeper bench. They've got, I mean, any one of them can go off. It's like, yes. okay, nobody has an answer for Nikola Jokic. That's fine. But the Lakers don't have an answer for Jamal Murray or Michael Porter. Aaron Gordon KCP went playoff career Aaron high Gordon. 29 points. It's, saying. it's like, you just like, they remind me a lot of like the South Carolina women's basketball team where it's just like, yeah. okay, you do have a couple of like really dominant players, but then you just have like any dude, any night can have 20 or 25. Plus there's some infighting too. Do you see D'Lo? aside separated from the team he wasn't on his phone but he looked like he was like parsing through a snack while like they were trying to 100%. figure things out he didn't make any buckets he didn't score any points and the bad side of a lebron james friendship is not a side that you would probably want to be on jay williams was like if i was darvin ham i would cut him right now yeah you you clearly quit or you gave yeah. up or whatever that is and sometimes i try not to read too much in that just because Sure. Like the guys sure. themselves will be like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you don't necessarily have to sit in the huddle, but even they seem to be clutch clutching their pearls. It just, it's a very defeatist and quit uh. quitty attitude, which is definitely not something that we would ever expect from a LeBron James led team. But this looks like it's, you know, listen, this is the same thing that I said last year when the heat were losing to the nuggets in the finals. And I was on around the horn. It was like the one yeah. viral thing I did last year. I was around the horn and they're like, how can the heat, Figure out how to turn this thing around. I was like, it's basically like asking the egg. Do you want to get scrambled or do you want to get fried? Either way, you're going to get cooked. There's just no. That's a bar. Your Hell. Uh, if you want it to be Jokic, fine. Then Jamal Murray's going to cook you. And if you take care of Murray, then Jokic will cook. It doesn't matter. They're just too good. And they're probably going to win their second straight championship. Kendrick Perkins, you're looking a lot like L. Duncan this Perkins. afternoon. Yeah, bar. Okay. Yeah, I'll like rap about it after this. <laughs> Peace. Hey, The L. Duncan Show. New episodes drop every Monday and Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts, also on YouTube, also on the telly. Gosh, we everywhere. Typically on Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, too. But, of course, we're on a special Friday release schedule. That's right. Because of the NFL draft. Come on. Detroit showed out. Well done, Detroit. It oh, looked yeah. beautiful there. Weather was a little brisk, but it looked great. Huge crowd of people. It was like 150,000 people there. Wow. They were two wins away yeah. in this football season from having that play out like in February. Correct. And probably double or triple that number. Yeah. Right? To see the Lions bring home on Lombardi. But this is cool. I love the aerial scenics of like the different cities and the different crowds absolutely showing out. Football, much like Chick-fil-A, brings people together. Oh, there you go. Okay. Still on a mission to get that franchise, huh? Listen, I know that only 0.000% of people, okay, actually get the green light, but there's still a chance. 0.001% is still technically mathematically alive. However, L, I said I like seeing the aerials. I don't like to be a part of like a mass crowd yeah. like that. You like being like in the crowds? I don't think anybody likes being in sure. crowds. I think it's one of those questions of would a crowd like that deter you from going and participating? Sure. And in certain situations, like we had to do the Patriots parade. Do you remember that? Um, in 2014, after they beat, you know, uh, oh, sure. the Seahawks, we, we I had to work that parade in Boston where over like a million people showed up. Weren't you on the other side of the stanchions, right? Correct. And I that was, is and a I big was elevated. Oh, an yeah, elevated surface? Yeah, exactly. You can't spell Very different. Can't spell elevated without L. Correct. You know right? what I'm saying? But when I see crowds like the New Year's Eve crowd at Times Square, Not all I think to myself is, where are these people going to the bathroom? Right, in their pantaloons, right? They're going a doo-doo in their pants. That's depends sales in the month of December just skyrocket because people know they're going to have to hunker down. Yeah. All right, hunker down. I don't like big crowds for a completely different reason than that. Also, obviously a valid reason. And it's not like the safety thing. It's not like the germ thing. Although this, this might spin it into the germ thing. And people might judge me for this. But I don't like washing my clothes very often. Okay. You know, I, 
I like to, I like to keep them st structurally integral. And if you're rubbing around all these people, then like it just gets the yuck. Okay. So I don't, you know, I can, I can read the words you're saying on your face, even though you're not verbalizing them hell. And I just want you to know it's painful. I, I, I'm a little surprised by this, Gary. You always smell really good. And now you're informing us. Well, you're informing I, us that you don't. I always smell you good. You don't want to go to crowds of people because you don't want to have to wash your clothes after. I don't like to wash my clothes often, L. I think it's a waste of water and it's a waste of time. Big time suck. Folding clothes? Are you kidding me? I'm going to be honest with you right now. This well, you shirt. Just, you're just going to take that shirt off and you're just going to hang it back in your closet? That's exactly what Are I'm you going to rub the pits or anything with soap? Can I tell you a superpower of mine? My girlfriend actually like tells everybody, I don't have BO. I rarely, I sweat during workouts, but hell, it's like a Korean superpower. No, I'm not kidding. This is true. If anybody wants to. Oh hell, my God, I love it. It's like someone being like, literally my doesn't stink. Well, that does. It just doesn't. No, no, that does, but my perspiration doesn't, L. It is a superpower. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. L, when we do a show, right, Sports Center, whatever, you're on for an hour with Kevin the Gandhi. Yeah. I'm on for an hour or three. I wear this shirt for three hours. It's not dirty. I'm taking this right off and it's going right back in the closet. I'll wear a shirt five, six times. Okay. Okay. And you know what I'll do? You know when I know it's time to clean it, take it to the dry cleaner? When the, the, the 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 dirty neck starts. Oh, out. the sweat rim. But it takes me out five six wears. Oh. And I know I'm not alone. I know I know there are people out there who feel shameful about living the same life I live. But just know, I am I am your shepherd. We are not alone. I am here with you, my brothers and sisters. We are not alone. You all are going to get your own stinky people table. What about pants, though? Because those rub against something very different than your pits, and those feel well, like they a, should be there's washed. There's a barrier. L, L, there is a barrier between that, okay? So this doesn't apply to boxers, then? Yeah, no. Those are those are generally one and done. <laughs> generally. Oh, God, no. L, stop it. All right, no. You, you're asking. See, look, there you go. For all of you out there that are like, I, the thing about Gary is he's so intimidatingly handsome, and he's just, like, so good looking, and I don't like it. He's not relatable. There you go. He's the pretty girl hey, that laundry. farts in the bed. <laughs> More L. Duncan show on the other side. <laughs> I didn't say anything about farting in bed, but I do do that. <laughs> <laughs>